I, I think it's a theme on this podcast that I don't read ever. I read on things that are on my phone and like menus. But that's like all I really read. And so. the, the menu's a thing of the past. And the men- yeah, well, the menu's on a screen now. Do you guys know how to use QR codes? <laughs> QR co- I I think I have... Yes, Griffin Gastropub. <laughs> I know how to use a QR code. I, I feel like you're not going to give me a choice otherwise. But the problem is that QR codes, you need to download a third-party app. There is no QR code reader, I believe, in integrated into the phone. So I just turn on my camera. Is that is that all you got to do? That's all I do. So you just turn on the camera, and, and yeah. then you upload that picture to the thing that you, you don't wanna... even have to take the picture. It just um, really yeah, you just put it. Up I didn't to know the QR, that. And then the URL pops up. Oh, uh, that might have changed <laughs> God, a lot know, of things. You don't know how to use QR codes. I really do. I, well, so I downloaded the QR code. How else are you gonna order the, the golden barbecue wings? What? Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Getting Groovy, or your first episode. If you're new here, we do conversations. I say words, someone else says words. Generally, that's how it's been so far. Uh, But today, if you have noticed that we are not in the location that we started in and have been for a while, and that's because my, my good friend, my high school buddy, Joe Rossetti, this man. Yes, hi. He, this, is his, his, this is his introduction. Um, we decided, since he has a drum kit and I don't have a single living space to myself, I should go over here. And now we're here. So In a secret, dis- undisclosed location. Yes, we are in a, not, we're definitely not in, under Guantanamo Bay, but no. we might be. If, you know, don't look there. But uh, today... Joe Rossetti, how are you? How you feeling? I'm well. You're well? I'm well, Connor. How what, are you? What are you? I'm doing well. What am I? What are you? That's the, that's the main question we're trying to find on this podcast. What are you? I think we've decided SpongeBob fan, first okay. and foremost. Right, number one. Um, and just a lover of the arts. Got it. And um, a, a provider of knowledge to the youth. You know what? That's... That's a noble profession. Yes. What it, so if if you want, we can get into your your current your current situation, or we can venture back into our past. Let's because start, we've had a past. Let's start in the beginning, and okay. then we can we have a nice full circle ending. Yeah, I think if you, if you yeah. know where I'm going with full that. full circle. You got it, like a symbol, mm-hmm. like a or a drum. You got a bunch of circles in front of you. I didn't even realize I was sitting at the kit. Yeah, there is a yeah. there is a drum kit in the shot. I don't know if you guys can tell. It's really small. So I think uh, we might play it at one point, we might not. Um, we definitely didn't start good. the episode with it. No. <laughs> but, okay, so getting back. It all started with the, the touchdown pass. Was that the first? Okay, so we were, on, we were on a JV football team known as the Niagara Weefield Falcons. And yes. we were not great. But That's true. at a certain point, I was put into the game because, you know, who else is here? Uh, and then I completed a touchdown pass to this man to me and i have a one catch to one touchdown ratio i yep. have a perfect 100 percent catch to touchdown ratio every throw that was thrown to you you caught is that yes. true yeah so i've never 100%. dropped a pass yep that's, that's those are uh hall of fame numbers it, uh, you gotta get uh what is it like 30 point 33 300 and over you're in the hall of fame like oh, with yeah. the baseball Oh, so for hitting, so batting average over yeah. 300, you're a lock? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. These days? These days. Yeah, so we're talking. Not Mark McGuire. Mm-hmm. No, Mark Fucking McGuire. Hitting homers. But we're not here to talk about baseball. We're here to talk about us. And before the before <laughs> the touchdown pass, there was right, the, yeah. the pizza party. The what? Okay, yeah. That was, I don't remember That's that what gave us our strength. Was it? Okay, so where did, okay, so you're a year older than me. I learned that today. Yeah, I'm not 28. Yeah, the, so we both seem older than we actually are, and we've discovered that even we, we trick ourselves. Yeah. So the, what is your, um, when, did, when did we literally first, was it JV football? Was that like going to practice and everything? We like hung out. Was that Nick, Nick Borelli was there? <laughs> Nick Borelli was, Nick, he, was out, he was everywhere. He was everywhere. <laughs> All over the field. So I'll tell you what. I mean, my first recollection of you <laughs> was, remember when Facebook was a thing? 
Yeah. And when it just became a thing. Yeah, right, right. I saw this this kid. I'm like, this kid seems fucking annoying. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> On my uh, my friend suggestions that's, or something. That's most people's first And then I, I showed up to JV football. I was like, fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're like, Jesus Christ. He's a lot taller than I thought yeah, he was. Yeah, right. That seems to make him slightly more trustworthy. He, could, he might be able to hold a conversation at yeah. one point, but... You never thought I'd, you know. I never thought we'd be sitting here. No, 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 no. no life, life finds a way, though, you know? But, okay, so JV football, mm-hmm. our glorious uh, one touchdown. So I in JV football, I will say I have I, – I will not say that I have a, a fantastic completion percentage. Okay. But I have two touchdown passes. That's, one, mo- that's probably mo- more than the starter. Right? It, I'm not going to say anything. But – so I had one in JV. Well, they were both in JV. I did not play quarterback in varsity, but that, that might have been some other. We're gonna get not gonna get too into that because I don't want to stir any shit. Yeah, because you but, know where I'm currently. Was that employed? Yeah, at a building. Yeah, that we used to go to daily. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't care. Fuck, fuck them. <laughs> I'm just oh, or maybe not. <laughs> um, this is all. Comedy. Once a falcon, always a falcon. Once a falcon, a falcon. If you choose to be afterwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's fine. They they were good. I think overall it was a it was a good environment, and it had could have been better. It could have been worse. So that's all I'll say. Isn't that life, Connor? Uh, you know what? It's I'm looking for the sweet spot. If I didn't have problems, what would we complain about? Right. You know. So, but other than that, uh, JV football the second year, I had a 40 yard touchdown pass oh, to big time. Steve Doctor. And uh, that was cool. the doctor, dude. The doctor he's the doctor. Was in. The doctor was in the end zone twice because I believe I threw an extra point as well. So I will say I'm not a fantastic football player, but I do have touchdowns on the board. That's more than most could say. Yeah, that's true. So, that's true. You know, I I accomplished something. But getting back to you, me. Okay, so you, me, and you were on JV football. That's true. Right after that, you decide football is not my passion, and I'm not. I'm good. Well, I retired varsity. on top. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I retired on top. You took a Michael Jordan approach yeah. and then just didn't come back. <laughs> why do you? Why do you got? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I'm, that's what I'm saying. So moving moving past that, what were your varsity? What What would your could have been varsity years of like, uh, like, of school and life? What were you up to? Give me oh. your synopsis. Synopsis of your life. Well, I from was. Those two years. I was writing a memoir. Okay. Good. Uh, this the. Uh, for your tri- of your trials, yeah, my trials, tribulations, but then my eventual overcomings. Right, right, right. You know, the healthier an egg, the golder its yolk. It's a, it's a philosophy I've lived by. Since. That's that's insightful. Um, is there any? Can we get this on like Amazon or is the memoir? Is it not done yet? Goodreads.com. Goodreads. Is <laughs> you get a download of PDF? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. I don't have a lot of cash. I'm also trying to save some trees. Yeah. So, so. I mean, at this point, yeah, mm-hmm. the book is out. The book itself as the a book? function. It's, it's an outdated concept, really. It's just it gives like a shit thoughts about and, books. and ideas. Yeah. I mean, we are wirelessly streaming our thoughts and ideas to the masses yeah. right no, now. I didn't write anything down. I I, I think it's a theme on this podcast that I don't read ever. I read on things that are on my phone and like menus, but that's like <laughs> all I really read. And so. the, the menu is a thing of the past. And the men, yeah, Well, the menu is on do, a screen now. Do you guys know how to use QR codes? <laughs> QR, I I think I have... Yes, Griffin Gastropub, I know how to use a QR code. I I feel like you're not going to give me a choice otherwise. But the problem is that QR codes, you need to download a third-party app. There is no QR code reader, I believe, integrated into the phone. So I just turn on my camera. Is that is that all you got to do? That's all I do. So you just turn on the camera, and, and yeah. then you upload that picture to the thing that you, you don't wanna... even have to take the picture. It just um, really yeah, you just put it. Up I didn't to know the QR, that. And then the URL pops up. Oh, uh, that might have changed <laughs> God, a lot know, of things. You don't know how to use QR codes. I really do. I, well, so I downloaded the QR code. How else are you going to order the, the golden barbecue wings <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know how to do this? Because they don't because they don't have menus, right? Okay, so, but that's the thing, is you'll still be reading it, but it's still be on your phone, mm-hmm. so. In any case, you're dodging the question. The two years memoir, other than your well, I four built a, hours I a built night. a music empire All right. the stock car boys. Good, good. So, who does that consist of? Oh, uh, the, the boys. The boys. Uh, we have. <laughs> Just boys. <laughs> Just a few boys. Um, now that we're Sean, m- now we're men. Jacob, yeah, well, just little boy. One's close. I know, just little boy names. I'm just trying to think of like <laughs> Jimmy, Kevin, yeah. Kyle, and, and Kyle. And Chris. Kyle's like a. I don't think any Kyle should grow older than seven, 
You don't need... Because once a Kyle's older than seven, we all know how we think about him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's keep him in his prime. Yeah. Prime, prime Kyle is seven mm-hmm. and, and younger. Like a, a, a baby named it, Kyle? That's kind of... That's cute. <laughs> Think about that. Think about, about old, think about an old man named Kyle. At what age do they develop their the monster energy drink in their <laughs> hand? At what age does that spawn? I think uh, that started with the DC shoes. It, you go DC shoes. Once you put shoes, on a pair of DCs at yeah. age seven. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're granted your first pair at seven. Mm-hmm. At eight, you, you're handed a monster. And uh, you gra- just gradually become more of an ass. But, yeah. you know, as, I, as we said, stock car boys, they're boys. Who are those boys? The boys. Name the boys. Because this is, this is going out to the masses, as we've said. Oh, I mean, so, well, they already know. But if they want to know yeah, further. I do have a live performance of them on this channel. If you guys would like to check it out, I'll probably put it in somewhere. Dream it done faded. Whoa, oh, oh. Ah, I said, catch me if you can. I'm a fully loaded. I shouldn't have make more editing things for me to do because I already don't want to do them. But, you know, two well, brains. you should, though. I yeah, should. You it's, should. It's just about not wanting to put effort and then eventually going, but it'll be better. You know what? <laughs> um, it might be a great point in the podcast to throw in that video right now. Yeah. Uh Wow! Oh shit, dude, you're really good at that. You're oh, wow. you've played music well in the past. Yes. So do thank you, you do you currently play music? I do currently play music. Nice, awesome. Glad you keep it up. Thank you. You know. Yeah. Um, okay, so how did you feel a about that performance and b name the boys because I still want them named. Well, that performance was okay. Okay. You know, I you go if you wanted the true stock car boy sound, you'd go check it out on Spotify like right now. And I'll put that up as I don't want to, but I will. So, so okay, so I'll finally give up the goods. Okay. Some of my best friends. Absolutely. You know, still great friends to this day. Dom Sherino, mm-hmm. John Taylor, mm-hmm. Jake Shellis, and Joe Corio. Night. Uh, those, I know these men. Yeah, we men. Yes. Now Not that boys. we're men, the stock car men. Now that we're men, we have facial hair. Now that we're men. And yeah, just you know, I'll always. <laughs> we're gonna continue playing. I'll always look back fondly on the, the, three, Absolutely. the three albums we've put out the past six years and. It's a time capsule. Yeah. It's a really, like, I, that's, the, that's the thing about, like, these podcasts and, like, music and movies and all this stuff. It's, like, you can just go back and watch something that you put a lot of time and effort into, and it's just about, like, reminiscing. Well, you know that the Stock fun. Car Boys are, like, my top listened to artist every year on Spotify. Absolutely. Because like, that's, not? I mean, that's the thing is, like, you got to jam in your own shit. I've listened to my music more times than I'll admit, mm-hmm. but it's coming out soon. Don't worry. Uh, it it might it'll probably be out by the time this is out. So if it's out, go to that. But I am uh, doing music videos for that. So something I want to talk about is you we'll ever see. heard of that um, Donald Glover guy? Uh, is he a childish Gambini? At, uh, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> is he? A, I think he wants to get rid of that. Yeah. Is he Donald? Just his name. Yes, but the one I mean, I feel like he broke into the rap world a lot more superficial than he now is. Yeah. So I could mm-hmm. yeah, I could see that. Um, he has this fun. So he has the best stand-up comedy special too. Weirdo. Um, oh, fantastic! Such a, uh, Taking your kids to Home Depot. Yeah, dude, it's great. I love it. Um, you remember that the joke he made about how um, he got criticized for picking up a girl in his car, and um, she made fun of him for listening to his own music. No. How come uh, a musician can't enjoy their craft? Right. And he goes on to say, like, what if I was like a Subway sandwich maker? Yeah. And I, I ate a sandwich that I made. Oh, oh pretty conceited, are you? Right. Yeah, so it's okay. like you just you put all that work into that sandwich. It's for other people. Mm-hmm. So, but no, it's when you put it like that, I feel like everyone kind of is like, oh yeah, right. But I think the biggest thing for your own music too is that since I have been like putting stuff together and doing stuff, just literally crafting music is listening to the same thing 800 million times. And when it like works, when you like all the hours and stuff you put into it, it like actually sounds good. You're like, it's just so validating for like all the time you put it. And it's like the same thing with movies. So yeah. it's like if you put all them hours and all the all them hours, if all them hours that I added up like to something for, Like 48 good, of them? Yeah, at least 48, somewhere around yeah. 50 maybe if you're bad. But, you know, that if, if 
If we didn't get that in in time, I would have been really depressed. But we did, and we saw it. And were you, you were there, right? Were, were you, you not there? Where? At the, you do not know about the North Park thing? I, something happened uh, okay. that I could no longer come to That's that. fine. But either way, I did see you and me on a big screen, and that was extremely validating. That's so. um, something I'll take to the grave. Yeah, that's, you know, that's just a that's just a. Pride we'll get there point. again. Yeah. That's the thing is you're gonna be. If anything, I'll use you as the drummer guy in a you know funny part, and you can I'll just make you bring your drums. And it's like if you want to be in this movie, mm-hmm. you gotta bring that drum set. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do that. Well, okay. I'll be the lead though. Anytime, you, if, anytime you need small me to, parts, yeah. nah. Just, I'll be I'm, the I'll be the romantic, you know, lead. Yeah, I'm I mean, Tom Hanks. Mm-hmm. I will not accept any role in the background. No. Do you think Tom Hanks has ever been in the background of a movie? Oh, of course he has. Yeah, like, well, not in like, you know, like it's Tom Hanks in the back. Like he was an extra. Like, do you think he was ever an extra? Mm, extra, I don't know. That's what I'm Minor saying. Minor role, of course. Doesn't every, everyone right. starts somewhere, right? Right. Didn't he start on TV? Most, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And then he did make that uh, stand-up comedy movie. I forgot what that was called, but I don't know. Whatever. Do you think Tom Hanks is part of the Illuminati? I think he, uh, I think he is the, the Magic Johnson of our times. Because as Magic Johnson got AIDS at a very early point in that, you know, epidemic, Tom Hanks got, you know, the coronavirus mm-hmm. very early. And everyone was like, no, why? So it's like, you know, they were yeah, kind like of perceived America's the grandpa. same way. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Magic Johnson's America's grandpa. Yeah. But no, Tom Hanks. And that's the thing, well, too, is like, should... it's the scare. It's the early on scare of like, oh, this is real. Like, and that's like, they kind of mirror each other in that. I don't know if any other way but that, but, you know. Maybe we should go and make it like a top five list of who is truly America's grandpa. Okay, yeah, we point. could do that. Okay. Um, but okay, so... We we named the boys. You okay. made music with them for two years, and it, you more than Much that. Much more than two. Well, right for the two years. If we're going like chronologically, oh, so, so I'm still in high school. Right. Okay. So you're so, in high school. Yeah, I played. Um, I, I we made a band. Just and, making SAT, uh, taking SAT. Yeah, I was taking prep. tests on the weekends. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was learning how to drive a car. Absolutely. And um, fun stuff. Yeah. So we, I think we had a bit of a pause there in our, you know. Back and forth. I mean, we still like it, in the hallway. We were like, "Hey, what's up?" Mm. We were we were always like, "Hey, what's up, guys?" And I think that's that's a good place to be. Still, am to this day. I'd, hey, man, still we're here. What's day. up? Yeah. Hey, yeah. what's up? Yeah. Not much. <laughs> good. Uh, or if the, if that's what you want. Mm-hmm. If you want not much, good. Yeah. But other than that, moving on from high school. Okay. What did what was your? Did you go to school for anything? I mean, you're a teacher now. I'd assume. Yeah, I went to school. Just spoiler alert, by the way. I I did kind of get, jump into that. Is it like um, a faux pas that I'm even doing this? As no, a teacher? I don't think so. Because I mean, it, it this makes you punk rock, you know. Yeah, you never. Yeah, We're always to, be real. You gotta be always punk rock. be punk, absolutely yeah. deep down. Yeah, we're in a classroom right now. This, this, is, yeah. this is a con- well, yeah. Well, we kind board. of were. Yeah, this yeah. might have. This is a was an old classroom, right? But that's all we have to say about that, right? And it is. Uh, it, it still has the learning juices in the air. Yeah, that's that's, 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 why, we, that's why we drink smart smart water. Yeah, absolutely, not not sponsored. This is only for, out of necessity for the room. But moving on from high school. Okay, so I went college. to a little college called Niagara University. Mm. Yeah, they got. A campus. They have a beautiful and campus and and beautiful students. You're telling me. Yeah, I was one of them. <laughs> Who do you think I was talking about? Oh, Jordan. No, 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 no. I mean, I, she's she's fine as as much as you want me to say she is attractive. She is. So there you go. <laughs> the, at peak level of what you would allow, there you go. But she knew that. Yeah. But she, <laughs> Jordan Hardman. Shout out Jordan Hardman. His boo. Boo, do you guys use nicknames? No, no. You guys are just Jordan and Joe? Yeah. Joe and Jordan? Joe Jor? Yes, that's right. Do you guys do like the shortened couple name? Yeah, it's Jordan. It will be Jordan. <laughs> yeah. Joe Worden. And uh, I guess we would be Zocon. Zocon. Yeah, we go, well, let's put her first. Connie. No. <laughs> Connie. We're putting her first. Zocon, Zocon sounds way cooler. Um, but All right, so, want, you want to oh, know yeah. my biggest highlight in hi- college? Yeah, give got, me that. Give me the highlights. I got a dog. You got a dog. We, we got a dog. Yeah, you and Jordan. Uh, the love of our life. Absolutely. Teddy. So what? Oh. Have and you met? It, no. Is it like a big, uh, like a 
Like Labrador? It's like a little Pamapuchi. Like, oh, he's small. about this big. Oh, yeah. okay. I mean, that makes sense. I just, when I hear Teddy, it's like the bear. You, you get a bear dog. Oh, you should have seen him. He was like a, he was a marshmallow when we got oh, him. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but he's still... Uh, you called him Teddy, and you were like, this looks like a marshmallow, but like a Teddy marshmallow. Yeah, that's right. So Teddy Graham. So his... Teddy Graham. His legal... Close to a marshmallow. His legal name, Teddy Rossetti. That's... Right, right, right. And we have the same birthday, so oh. 20 years apart. So I got yeah, right. when it, you know, just when I turned 20. Yeah. I mean, you'll always remember his birthday then. I'll always remember being with my friends at the Kings of Leon concert. Mm. Okay. And then the next day, going to go pick up Ted. Yep. It was That's just like a great, the best two days a you good, imagine. A good moment. You're, you're riding the, the ride of steel. Yeah. And then like, oh, this is Darien Lake. Yeah. And okay, then like, right. Then 48 hours later, you're holding a little puppy dog. Uh, that's, see, moments you blink like that, and you're, you know. It's like one, two punches mm-hmm. that just like make your week. Yeah. I had a, I had a very good uh, 420 week last year. Mm-hmm. And then that, that was like a very, like the highlight of my year. And I like finished it over, like a outline for like a script, like a bigger one. And like, there's stuff in the works. I, I did write the script that I'm trying to make this year. So hopefully by the end of this year. Do you need year, anybody? I w- most likely. This is, this is why I'm doing the podcast. It's all, I'm using everyone, but hopefully they get something out of it. Uh, and I will give them money if necessary. But that basically was. You guys that heard week. that on, on camera that he's going to give money away, right? If necessary. Okay. I, that, those are all in parentheses. When I talk like that, it's parentheses. If you want him to pay you to be in his movie, he will. Uh, if you're good enough, but, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the thing with the, like uh, having a week of like successes yeah. and then the rest of it just kind of being shitty. I mean, not the, the, the <laughs> like everything else, you know, like, <laughs> like, like, the like week, that week was, that was a good week, yeah. but everything else, it mm. sucks, dude. And that's like no way to live. So, but that's why you do this weekly. And then it's like, mm-hmm. if people like it, then I get the little, it's honestly doing th- Doing things and drugs are the same thing. You know what I mean? Like making a song and doing drugs are the same thing, but you just like, it just makes you feel a different way. You go know ahead I mean? and go ahead and believe it. Say, that's that's all ahead. I'm saying. <laughs> I'm here for hot takes uh, and, you know, comedy. But, <laughs> but other than that, as I say often to change the subject, mm-hmm. uh, after college, yeah. where are you now? And or if you want any other highlights of college, um, I think that's fun. Where am I? Do you in? have any frat parties? No, I don't. You, I okay. don't know. <laughs> I, you didn't seem like that guy. I don't have that. Those you might be of... the only drummer to not like drink a lot of alcohol. Well, I, there's a lot. Well, of... I mean, let's not get. Oh, I, oh, that's fair. In a in a party setting. Oh, okay. So that's like, fair. Most times I'm in a party setting. I'm mm-hmm. usually at work. Right. 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 Um, on it's the fair. clock. As You're right. You will. You wouldn't be, uh, you know, boozing. No, but I mean, college was college is as college was, yeah, and I right. had my group of friends that really probably weren't even fellow students. You know, I had my band, mm-hmm. um, and I just had you know people from because I stayed in the area, right. but I didn't, you know, I didn't go out and make a fool of myself. No, that's that's why you're here now. I and would that's say. why I think I have a very good yeah. job at yeah. my former high school. Absolutely, as the English uh, teacher. Yep. For the ninth, tenth, and twelfth grade. Oh, you're getting the babies. I get the babies and yeah. the big boys. Well, oh, ninth. Oh, yeah, tenth and twelfth. Yeah, yeah. So, so juniors, you're just like yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah, please <laughs> don't give me juniors. <laughs> Anyone in their junior year is a handful, and I'm out of yeah. it. Um, which isn't fully not true, but well, you remember, you remember junior, junior year sucked. Yeah. Senior year is way better. Yeah, than you remember that? Year. Could you imagine being a student now? Oh, though? No, no, it would not be the same. It would suck. I, I shouts out to anyone in school in high school like, during all I've this. I've never heard that. Shouts out. So shouts out. Shout out to one. Shouts out to everyone. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, shouts out. Many shouts and to shout, the many children. Shout out to me for keeping it all afloat, yeah, holding absolutely. down the fort. Shout out to Joe for just being a swell guy yeah. and learning, get, making children learn, mm-hmm. just like forcing their hand of knowledge yes um which is in in a way some kids may not want that knowledge to be in their head but if you like i feel like you gotta like lube up the knowledge if that if you know what i mean like there's information that you want to relay to these kids right Mm -hmm. so how are you going to get it into their heads without being super boring and have them be like anti you 
Right. So you just be funny. You try to be interesting. You, you know, ask questions in provocatively. But yeah. I feel like being funny is like the biggest thing. Because children all respond to just like a funny guy. Yeah. And they'll be like, you're cool. So, and then you, you have been in uh, my movies. So oh, that one day, yeah, one day the kids showed up. They're like, Mr. Rossetti, <laughs> Mr. Rossetti. <laughs> They're like, we know your secret. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what's my secret? Yeah. They're like, um, oh, don't act like you don't know. <laughs> Detective Denim. <laughs> and they, they found yeah. the short film. Right. Um, Undercover. So I wonder what they were looking up. Yeah. I wonder what they were looking up. Joe Rossetti, YouTube, Joe Rossetti. Is Joe Rossetti question They're mark? just giving Does me Does Joe clips. Rossetti <laughs> I, have life outside of, out, of school building? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is you, Joe you gotta, Rossetti real? I was going to say, you got to teach them English yeah. if they're talking like that. You better yeah. not have taught them that. Is Mr. Joe, man, human boy, in school, not out school sometime? Yeah. Uh, question mark period <laughs> just grammar yeah. and throwing a grammar mistake on top of that <laughs> they, they commas all yeah. all out of, all, all out of whack all out of sorts there's a there's a semicolon in yeah. there who put a se- why stop using semicolons you don't know what they do but well some not, way, some not if i can help it well that's ah see that's that's your that's your job is to learn a, learn them some semicolon but that's what i'm saying so to teach someone how to use a semicolon you can tell them what it does but mm-hmm. they're going to be like whatever and then forget well it splits up two clauses yeah right but the, like you just said that and i will forget that in 20 minutes but okay. if you were like like if if uh think think about if like santa claus and mrs claus yeah. put like a semicolon in between them and mm-hmm. the bed that's funny like that's kind of funny. It's like they splits up two clauses, right? Okay. It's you know. Yeah. Okay. That's a that's a good teaching tool. There you go. Thank you. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like you gotta like lube up the knowledge. That's lube it up with never, comedy. Never heard that before. Yeah. But it's willing willing to accept that. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I can go with that. It's and the on same the thing spot. that all music is drugs. Is it, that also yep. kind of what you said earlier? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, well, m- making doing anything that gives you like fulfilling feelings okay is kind of like when you do drugs that give you a fulfill like when a drug will like hit the spot i don't know what you're talking about i'm just saying i'm i'm not saying that you do them but i'm saying that in the world of drug use people use them to feel a certain way and in the same way that people would perform music or do this thing to feel a certain way it's like the same brain effect like it's not the same as like food like i would not say drugs are food but like drugs would be like performing. Do you know because that of the feelings? Certain cheeses elicit the same chemical reaction in your brain as hard drugs. I didn't. Well, cheese itself is literally old milk. So I, I'm just surprised we got to the point where we're like making okay, a so bunch these of are, them. These are the topics. Yeah. These are the topics I wanted to. No, absolutely. So what was up with the first guy who who drank cow's milk? What was he doing? Dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, did he go straight from the tea? What was he up to? I why why was he down there? Like, who? What kind of milk was the first milk to be? I mean, obviously a lady lady boob milk, like human lady boob <laughs> milk. That was probably number one. <laughs> number two, it might have been like a you know like a goat. Goat, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, you know, or those, like a sheep. You know the goats, you know. Well, that's what, that, the, in a certain part of the yeah. world. <laughs> That's well, that's the thing is like those are like the herd animals mm-hmm. that you're just like I wonder what comes out of that yeah. and then but the, the thing is like who, you and it's white but picture and the guy like, who eh. <laughs> picture the guy who said I wonder what comes out I wonder what what happened you get bored yeah what do you what do you do when I what do you do bad. when you get bored eh, well. I mean all I'm saying is drugs are playing music <laughs> they're the same thing no uh, but no milk it's it's strange I would say. Also, though, like, cheese is, like, the next step, you know what I mean? Like, there was one guy that started... <laughs> what would happen if I let this mi- gross milk get so old that yep. I could eat it? And it was good. And then <laughs> you take that cheese and then melt it onto something else. So you heat up the milk. Liquid when to it's solid old. to liquid? Like, what? Where... Where are we? So I thought about this recently, if you want to get into this. I think the, the time stamp of human, human civilization we're at right now is is determined by dryer sheets. So a dryer so the concept of what a dryer sheet is. So human beings have like developed clothing, right? So like we all got to wear clothes and walk around unless we're like in a nudist place. So we're all just people walking with clothes. They get dirty, 
we don't like smelling the dirty clothes, so we got to wash them. We used to do it in rivers. We got to do it, you know, with like a washboard and all that shit. And then we progressed to a point where we have machines do this now. And then these machines wash and dry the clothes. So we have literally this entire pro human process that we've always done, just taken care of for us, completely automated. And then on top of that, we're going to have a little tiny thing that we throw in the dryer just to make sure it's not all staticky when we get it out. I think it's a whole bunch of bullshit, but whatever. But no, that's what I'm – like, it really does help. Who's wash, who still washes their clothes? Uh, okay, so this is the this is the music portion of your, your self-thinking. It's like, who needs to, like, shower, eat? Like, mm -hmm. it's just – you got to – like, we're playing the drums or we're not – or we're sleeping. Like, yeah. Those are the two things. Mm -hmm. And then you're like – Wait, who needs don't to watch? Let, don't let the the you know media propaganda yeah. you know trick you into thinking you know you got you have to wash your clothes. I that's a hot take if I've ever heard one to be honest. I mean, sometimes you got to toe the line, mm -hmm. and I mean, if you're willing to take that stance, I'll I'll accept it. So, either way, we can we can go to a break now if you'd like, that's and then uh, we can do so. We'll do a break. We'll have a little setup. We'll do some changes to the set, and uh, we will come back with an advertisement for my merch. Okay. That is going to be in a different spot now. I've probably already changed the other uh, podcast, but now we're going to talk about this other location to get it. So great. Give me a "We'll be right back," but do it as like uh, do it as uh, Dave Grohl in the Foo Fighters. We'll we'll be right back. <laughs> okay, great. we will be. We will. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. All right, do it real quick. Do it like Andrew WK now. Who? Andrew WK. Andrew WK. The party party guy. He's white. I don't know who that is. It's okay. Dave Grohl. He's he's like a version of Dave Grohl if he liked to party a lot more. Oh, I is think he Dave like Grohl a also like he the, made. Well, no, no. Andrew WK is his own person. He's a man. And he has songs that he has created. But he just always wears, like, a white T-shirt and white jeans. He was on that um, Destroy, Build, Destroy show. I don't know if you saw that on Cartoon Network ever. Well, that makes sense why you don't know who he is. No, I don't. But he has, like, two or... Th he has, like, an album, I think. I don't know. But Andrew WK, where are you at? <laughs> Moving on. Give me a... <laughs> I don't know. We might not even use this part, yeah. but who knows? No, that's okay. uh, Give me someone else. I'll do a... Um, do you want a music person? John Lennon. He, okay. We'll be right back. John? What's up, everyone? Welcome to the ad portion of the podcast. Right now is when I tell you about all the clothes that I have that you could wear on your body. And uh, hopefully they look cool to you. I tried to make them to wear that, you know, if you didn't know who I was, that you people would still be like, hey, that's cool. So... You know, if you want to check it out, it's on Teespring. You can go to minkblot.com, hit the shop button. That'll take you right to it. If not, go find it. Just type in minkblot. You know, you know where I am. Um, so today, I have Joe Rosetti here. How does how do you feel about these these clothing options? Well, and such? I thought they were, if not brilliant, no, indubitably certified, um, and dashing dashing of course and i thought you know might as well say this you know rather than go and wash your your dirty clothes mm -hmm. go buy minkblot gear and just right. wear that yeah no just instead really it's all about like not not necessarily uh wearing your clothes more than one time and i think if you do buy one of my clothes and you you do wear that i think you should wear a different type of clothing like i don't even know what i'm saying anymore hold on this is what is this? What it's, are we doing? It's an ad for ad for McBlot gear. Just buy it. Sure. I can't form thoughts and sentences, but that doesn't stop you from clicking the link in the description, you know? Right here below. You ever do that? Like right yeah. here. Yeah, the like there right all the designs should be scrolling on the screen. Or right here. Now. Or there. Or here. Or everywhere. I like that green one. It's a good one. It's, it's a good theme to this podcast. Um, but let's uh let's get back. Let's get back to episode. Okay. Wait, we're done. We're done with the ad. Yeah. All right, bye, everybody. And and we're back. We are back with John Lennon. No, wait, that's Joe Rossetti. Wait. Hold on. That was, you transported me to 1967, not yeah. eight. When did Sergeant Pepper's? 67. Seven. Mm -hmm. That's the good one. Good year. That was a good year. That was 
Uh, not the, the bad stuff of that decade didn't happen yet, <laughs> yeah. which is good. So, you know, you, but you got to put time in a bottle sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that's a Jim Croce song. Oh, he's my favorite. He's the man. Yeah. We can get into music. But before we get into music, let's get into... I think we might have some music, the music. for you. Yeah, we have, uh, we have a drum set here. Yes. And we figured we might as well just jam, just press, press some of these uh, toms down and whatnot. They're called... That's a tom, right? This is Tom 1 and Tom 2, Tom Tom. Gotcha, gotcha. And that's not Thomas. It's T-O-M. <laughs> My Thomas drum. Your Thomas drum. <laughs> yeah. Maybe from now on. Yeah, from now well, on they are. It's in it's set in stone. Yeah. It, we are recording. I yeah. did double check, um, but we figured okay. So so you got a drum kit there. I do. And this is oh, wait, bullshit. Oh, I didn't even realize. Oh wait, I didn't even on. realize. Oh wait, this. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> we got to back up. There is a drum kit here. Again, I don't know if anyone has ever noticed a drum kit before, but that's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, I'm gonna even the scales because this. Felt a little of, un unbalanced, this right? This piece of garbage just, you know, is showing me up right now. So I think, you know, this is all live. We should do this. We should. So I'll, I'll give you a tempo, and then you got to play to the tempo. And then I will, I will also change this tempo so you got to, like, this is the game. So okay, so we're playing a game. Does this work? Does yeah, this, this works. Is this fun? I, we we didn't plan this. I just thought it's right now. Okay. So do you, is that yeah? If you know how to keep time, I guess it's fun. I can keep a bit of time, I in a bottle, sometimes. Okay. But okay. So are you ready? Give me a four count. You ready? All right. Ready. That's, so that's that's drumming, that's how drumming that's works. That's drumming 101. I that's, mean, <laughs> for um for a more in, in depth tutorial, you know, right. check out. Uh, yeah, who, give me your links. Give me your give me your tutorial men that you would send people to if they want to learn drums. Well, myself. Yeah, so yeah, you so teach, go to me you first. teach drums. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the first person you want to talk to is me. Right. DM um, DM them if you're in the area. And then so so what are you talking in terms of? There's this guy on Instagram. I don't know him personally. J Scott Drummer. Okay. He's really good. Gotcha. I mean, I have you know, my. Um, well, that's I my mean, famous I, artists. Right. I'm just saying, like resources people can go to because I've always wanted to play the drums. Well, YouTube drum tutorials, right. Drumio. Okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, I learned as a kid, and um, yeah. Do you want to go into your history of drum? Before I do that, I wanted to put an offer out there. To <laughs> we just go the, right back into the podcast, like nothing <laughs> before, even happened. Before I, before that was I great, do that, by the way. I just want to say that. Yeah, I mean, you were kind of pushing it I, with the uh, <laughs> just all over the place cowbell, but. That's, I mean, that's what I guess we're signing up for, right? This podcast is chaos and incarnate. I wanted to make an offer to all my rappers yep. out there. Oh, I was going to say, Jay Dilla. That's, yeah. a, that's a man. Mm -hmm. He plays the drums, and he's well really respected in the rap community. So for all the you rappers out there who mix your beats, I have an offer for you. Free of charge, but you have to do the work. <laughs> you come to me. You know, We'll, we'll, we'll link up. Yep. I will give you break beats. I will record any sort of loop on the true kit because you know people are getting tired of the synth, you know, synthetic I'm drums. I'm sure I am. People are getting tired of the robot keyboard drums. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I will give you um, any beat. You know, I'll lay it down: four bars, eight bars, twelve bars, thirty-two bars, however many you want. 
on one condition. A half tray of bars. A half tray of bars. Interesting segue. But the one condition, <laughs> you have to let me have a vocal on your... Uh. Like, okay. you know, Sean Paul? Yeah, yeah. Sean Paul. Sean Paul. I have to, it would be like, uh, Joe Rossetti. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Rossetti's on the drums. Yeah. Like, no, so I can, I'll record the drums. Yep. But you have to let me have like a DJ Khaled. Mm. Yeah. Right. Be the best. Yeah, right, right, what right. Would that, what, a tag. Yeah, That's you, what you'd have be. to let me play my tag and it has to be a continuous loop in your song. Oh, okay. okay. So that's, so it's. You got you got to make it again though with like the merch. It's like the same thing where you got to like make it a little tasteful. Like it has to add to the music. And it, I would just it would be ASMR and it sure is surreal. Yeah, it sure is surreal. That's great. I do like it. That's the new brand I'm building by the okay. way. Okay, sure is surreal. It sure is. It sure is. I like it. I th- I think I did follow you on Instagram. I think I, I I'm pretty s- sure. slow starting slow. Yeah. Um, well, if you want to promote it, I mean that's later, but. You know, we have we have time. We oh yeah, we have all the time in the world here. At least at least another two hours. At least that's well at most I would say. Yeah, we, let's most. cap it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we can pull a Joe Rogan. Yeah, well you know, I, I we don't have like enough coffee in. This we also room. don't have an Alex Jones. We also no that man that man can go for a long time, yeah. but so what? Moving on, if you want to moving on up, great song. Uh, was that Jeffersons? I'm pretty sure Jeffersons. Yeah, so there's the Ooh, TV theme song. Yeah. Which funny story, funny that you mentioned that. Yeah. As a as a wee lad. Okay. As a little, as a little boy. Got it. A little stock car boy. A little before uh, I whatever, Joe little Joe. I this is um whatever building we find ourselves in today. <laughs> this is the building that I actually learned to play music in. Oh, really? And I would perform um nice. camps, you know, we I went to camps here. Camp Town Races. Love and, it. Um, Love that song. Ooh, it's a good one. That one has a bit of a darker history. Well, continue. I teach that in a, okay. Um, <laughs> but you, know, you bring up uh, moving on up. Yeah. And it was just funny. One of the summer camp themes was the songs of television, mm-hmm. and we played. I was I was in the theater. Yeah. I mean, as if if, if this building does have a theater. I don't right. Know. Yeah. Um, we were in the theater. The theater that this building may or may not own. Okay. And um, occupy. I was just jammed, maybe seven years old, eight year old, playing the drums to yeah. the Jeffersons TV show Dude, theme that's the song. Shit. And that's the like, you gotta teach your kids like those old shows because mm-hmm. like, if really all it is is just about what's thrown in front of your face because like that's those shows have so much value and so much like history behind them mm-hmm. that like I will never watch like I I mean I might but it's always like like it's like dated in an adult's brain when they are like just finding this and they're like and eh, this isn't that like you want to create the nostalgia that you had as a kid for the thing for your kid if you want them to have the same, you know, appreciation for it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, you got to give them the same perspective that you got because my parents didn't show me any of the movies or TV that they... I mean, we went to, like, go see the movies, like, go see movies. Like, we saw all the Avengers, like, in theaters and stuff. Okay. So, like... But, like, I never saw, like, any old TV shows. Like, I don't know. My dad watches all this shit all the time, and I'm like... It's just so stale to me because I don't think I was. Wait, so are you praising this stuff or are you dissing this? No, stuff? No, it's good. I I think the the older stuff. Some people don't see the value in it for what it is because they don't have the the tie to it to their. They childhood. didn't stay home with Nana right. on on sick days watching TV Land. Dude, Price is Right will stick <laughs> in my chest for the rest of time because that shit is staying home from school. It's the best thing that's on TV. Mm-hmm. Everyone's always excited, crazy colors. Well, except the past few months. Well, other than that. I mean, it's the, the pandemic has slowed down Price is Right's <laughs> They rise. ruined my, my joy joyful <laughs> experience of watching The Price is Right when I was off work. For you know those. what? The Price is Right started my journey, and I think I've moved on They would bit. never let me get past the first showcase. <laughs> They're and this guy just, comes in. I'm always a dollar over. It's bullshit. Today is Thursday. <laughs> just dead. Almost dead. But either way, so let's get into your history, like drum wise, and then where you are now. So the, you said seven years old playing playing the Jeffersons, not named Kyle, as we've established. Mm-hmm. Um, moving on from that, mm-hmm. you had the Stock Car Boys. Of course. That was your that was your high school venture. Your middle school, were you just solo? Like that was just kind of well. I was in a little band called the Town Rockers. Town Rockers. Yeah. Shout out the Town Rockers. Yeah. OGs. OGs. Um, so after high school, did you start playing for like 
other bands or what's your well, give me your drum so we found out you're now a teacher we so you have responsibility of children which the is, secret is out yeah yeah so from that you're also a rocker so in a, in a way school of rock is really a part of this whole there's a reason mr s is on the board yeah i, I wasn't going to mention it yeah. but uh, hopefully someone noticed it and commented it before egg. you said that yeah, yeah. Um, there's also a, a well-known painter in here, and if you could see it, mention something. I don't know. Check around, but I don't. Oh, don't give me. Um, maybe watch the video if you're only listening to the audio, because you will have zero idea what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, um, moving. So you, bands. Bands. Okay. Give me your. Give me your uh, post high school bands, not including Stock Road Boys. Okay, so um, I've been playing, you know, acoustic electric live shows with a fellow named Chris Borgatti for gotcha. a while. We play, you know, in Lewiston and shouts Buffalo. Out. So shouts out to Chris. Um, I've been backing Chris up. When we're going to start playing again this summer, you know, yeah. the Stone Jug, Water Street, mm-hmm. um, any place that'll have us early. Shout out to anywhere that I could also record this podcast because I'm looking for that as well. So so, so I play with Chris. Gotcha. I play in a new funk groove band mm. that i think a few people might get excited about that i mention it especially if uh they're fans of the podcast known as getting groovy that is slightly themed to i would say what your uh, music production style is you know trying to encapsulate so that group yeah um i hap- made a i made a reference to them yeah we threw in a little subliminal messaging a yep. little subliminal advertisement mm-hmm. so the half trays of niagara falls new york boom the secret's uh, out featuring pete hewer mm-hmm. on guitars keyboards producing the songs photographer World extraordinaire photographer videographer extraordinaire videographer. Um, yeah, fellow dude. fellow brother in education mm-hmm. um, an all-around he's, great guy he's like not not to you know mention anything but he had a birthday oh yeah that and he might have just turned 31 he might have maybe you know i didn't want to might, I didn't he might not say like his can, birthday being i'm trying to be nice to him so i wanted you to bring it up but i mean i did kind of want you know so you, we, I, everyone's getting older all right yeah. we're good we're good we're good there was it's no fine. secret it's not really so yeah, like on his, look birthday, at his driver's license <laughs> on his birthday the the half trays yes uh, we released our our debut ep double dipping Mm. Which features a beautiful shot of my forearm and an ice cream cone holding a chicken wing. Is it a chicken wing? <laughs> no, it isn't. It is a chicken. Want to take a closer look? Wait, the half trays. Is that supposed to be double dipping? Yeah, I mean that it's would a, make sense. I'm holding a drumstick. That was kind of a, oh. a, a funny part. I don't know why I always thought I, I, I literally wh- had it in my head I that it was. I can see ice cream. why you would think it's an ice cream cone. I can see why. I just I don't know how to get to it. Um, I'm pretty sure. Okay. So you can check the half trays out on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. YouTube I'm sure music. we'll have a, a social media presence soon. You know, really, what we're trying to do is capitalize on the um, the funk, oh the funk instrumental thing. Yeah, you can no, see that it's a chicken wing. Menahan, that's Menahan Street Band. You know. Yeah, them Wolfpack. Yep. Uh, I was gonna say it's very like Budo's band, like similar to. And we, um, you I know, mean, Daptone is like you know as a whole. We but, take, um, you know, we take older influences as well, mm-hmm. like Steely Dan's my favorite. Hell yeah! I think these these guys are such great songwriters. Mm-hmm. Not only is there Pete, there's world famous Kevin Johnson, world who famous. traveled the world with Cirque du Soleil. Really? Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, so he's on a little hiatus because of you know the pandemic, but I'm sure he'll be yeah. back at that soon. That's dope. And then Mike Johnson on bass lays it down thick. Dude, he's fucking. You got gotta the, listen. He got the, the lines. Yeah, he does have the lines. The first the first song oh off that EP. Just fucking jamming. You got to hear all of them. There's five of them out there. Yeah, the, start with the first one, move to the second, and then so on and so forth till you get to the end. Mm-hmm. And then if after and then the listen album, to it again. Yeah, I was gonna say. Then if you want to start the first one again, yeah. it's up to you. It's a, every song is a great palate cleanser for the last. I would say so. It's a, it's a good uh, selection, and I think that's you know the biggest a, the, thing the, with the most, EPs. The most Western New York thing you could do right now. Mm-hmm. You could you could go home. You could um, buy a chicken finger sub could, from Wegmans. You might want to buy a half tray it. of cheese and pepperoni pizza. Or that, yeah. Cup and char. Okay. Cup throw and char. On, cup and char. Um, throw on a That's little... That's a band name. Yeah. Throw on the half trays <laughs> on Spotify. Yeah. Let's get a little loosey-goosey. Get a blue cheese yeah. dip, yeah, you I, know? I did... I Okay, so the ice cream, I was like, okay, blue cheese. That's why I thought it was ice cream. And uh, shouts out to the half trays for putting the correct dipping sauce on wings, because I mean, I know we're all from here, so it, we all know. Yeah, we all but like, like 
Did it did it need to be said? Yeah, but you know, I have to for for our out of town listeners mm-hmm. that uh, don't get it. You know the you know the Stocker boys have a great following in Sri Lanka. They do. Yeah. Yeah. It's and this is uh, this is a true fact. This is true. This is a true teacher fact. Yeah, I wouldn't lie to you. Well, I just want to I want to see the video that the uh, Sri Lankan individual would create listening to your music, and then I'll be like, okay. But I, for for now, I'm like eighty percent. Yeah, okay, that makes sense to me. Okay, you believe me 80%. Yeah, so okay. tw- there's 20% room for, like, I just need to see it, though. Okay, I can, you know. I'll generate some proof. Okay, gotcha. Um, should reach out to your Sri Lankan yeah. fans. Mm. You got it. I mean, why am I even laughing? Yeah. It's, there's zero jokes here. No. We've never made a joke this whole podcast. No. I think that uh, everything we say is truth, and you should take it as that. You have to <laughs> end with the truth. You end, right, because then people know exactly where you stand. Because yeah. that's what sticks in their head, the last thing you say. Mm-hmm. But if they only listen to the first half of the podcast, you're fucked. That's so, true. I'm gonna, what are you going to do? Well, they'll learn about how I feel about washing my, du- my clothes. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Um, and p- people named Kevin. Yeah. Or, Kyle. yeah, Kevin, Kyle. That will probably be upset to hear this, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, but you I, you have the option of a nickname at any time, and you choose to stick with Kyle. So, <laughs> I think that's your fault. I've been dying yeah. for a, a nickname, a good nickname. I mean, your name is Joseph. Yeah. What do yeah, you, it is. You have a, a nickname. <laughs> what is that? Hey Joe. Ah, you know the the Hendrix song. I mean, how many how many people though can they claim to that? Well, uh, you could go JoJo. Yeah, I mean, maybe something that has nothing to do with my name though. Uh, like Rocket. You yeah, be like, like something. Like Spider from School of Rock. If we're gonna get into that. Yeah, no, like yeah, but like, like spell it with a Y. Spider with a Y. Yeah, mm-hmm. or like Tom York. I was talking to someone about this yesterday. It's like they um, shout out to Revolver Records. Uh, I just started there, and well, it's been a couple of weeks, mm-hmm. but they have been. Uh, I've just been like hanging out and having conversations, and someone said, I think it was Ben, so or one of the uh, customers, like the regulars, but they were like, "Do you think Tom York would be as famous if, if his name was spelled phonetically? Like, if this just there's no H, <laughs> there's no E R, like weird just lettering. Mm-hmm. I don't think he would be as popular." It's it's like that's the uniqueness that people are like I like this guy. So do we know if that's his true given name on top of all of this? That's true. He yeah, could so. have he could have been Tom York phonetic. Yeah. And then he's like, you know what? Let's you always try to do up. something to make yourself stand out. Andy Warhol, mm-hmm. you know all that shit. Mm-hmm. But uh, so drumming with the half trays. Yes, drumming with the half trays. Drumming with Chris. Chris Borgatti. Chris Borgatti. Um, recently have been asked to uh, provide percussive assistance with uh, the, the saddest, raddest boys in Buffalo. That's Also that's known as dope. Passed Out. Okay. Yeah, um, you, you, oh, yeah, you were mentioning It's that, a little yeah. collab, right? Because Dom right. Shrino, mm-hmm. good buddy Dom. Dom from guitar, the boys. Um, with Andy, Andy mm-hmm. Pachier. Very philosophical man. Yeah, I can get down with that. He's looking like Yukon Cornelius these days, though. You, who is that? Who's oh. Yukon Cornelius? What would that give? I don't get the reference. He's the, um, how do we put this? The lumberjack and Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Oh, yeah. okay. The mountain man? Yeah, he's the mountain man. Oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Jake Rogers on bass. Hell yeah. Those guys are fun. Yeah, that's, and that's the thing. They're like, like living we, on the edge. I was going to say, we were talking about jumping around to different music styles. Yeah, and so different I mean, tastes. they're punk. I mean, yeah. if we're talking punks, right. <laughs> these are a bunch of punks. Yeah. <laughs> Just the you know the the dirtiest mohawks you've ever seen. Mm. They don't wash their clothes for sure. I don't think they've ever <laughs> washed. But no, it's, it, jokes, jokes, people. Everyone can be how they are. I'm just trying to be funny. Uh, whatever. So with that, yeah. the um, the drumming. You you do teach drumming. I did. Or you you have you've taught my girlfriend's sister how to play drums, which is funny. Yeah. Yeah. So that was. You know, How is she we, doing? We mentioned that she isn't drumming. She's not drumming. Not very yeah, much. She stopped taking. She stopped taking lessons. Yeah. I mean, she's doing uh, like uh, college, college stuff. The she, college thing. You know, I think she's uh, getting into, you know, animals and whatnot. So <laughs> I aren't we shouts out? Aren't we all? <laughs> aren't we all getting into the animals for sure? Yeah. But shout out Phoebe. She would like to hear me say that. Oh yeah, so there that's you go. nice. Yeah, shout um, out Phoebe. Shout out Phoebes. You get three. You just got three. You're welcome. We're done talking about you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, with your with your drumming, yes. you you want to provide uh, drums for rappers. Was that was that a hundred percent genuine? Do I want to do that, it? 
You, I will. You okay? Got will it. they let me like be have a voice in the background saying mm-hmm. something like, "And it sure is surreal." Yeah, <laughs> it sure is surreal on a loop. That could be right before a drop. That'd be nice. Mm-hmm. But you know, have you been working with any like like just straight up like music producers like straight up like like in like a garage band able to because that's where I'm coming from. I'm a bedroom pop guy where I'll like like you know like Mac DeMarco and like all the stuff where yeah. it's like. I'm just playing all this shit in my room, and then I'll show it to people eventually. Well, I ha- have I, um, like, so their instrument is the computer? Yeah, basically. I wouldn't and say. And like a MIDI, or like a keyboard. No, I mean, there there are elements of that in the half trays stuff. Right. Um, but no, we're all playing instruments. Right. I right. haven't yet played with just a, a beat mixing producer. Right. No, so I wouldn't say that. Well, I mean, if you want, I just... I'm just... Do you want to be the first guy to take <laughs> some, say. some of my break beats? And, I really do, yeah. kind of. <laughs> as long but, as you know the deal. I mean, I'll put it, I'll put your soft vocals in the background. Well, I don't know what. I, that's one sure option. Surreal. That's one option. Do they also? Can they also pay you money, like money dollars? Can people give you money dollars to to give you drum beats without? They could tag? pay me. Yeah, maybe that's the. Yeah, either you pay me. Yeah. Um, and it's probably I'm I'm working at about a hundred bucks an hour these days. That's not too bad. I want to let everyone know that. I mean, that's uh, yeah. I, I would keep your rate public because that just avoids confusion. Yeah, yeah. So I just want good. that out there. Yeah. Uh, or maybe we can like. Maybe we can negotiate this. You know, um, but either start, you pay you know, me you know, as everything. much money as you have, <laughs> yeah, right. and as much money as I want. Right. Or also, if you like the artist, probably that probably does. You know, like if you if you kind of like like their direction and think you can improve it and you're like you know they like scratch my back i yeah. scratch yours right, right well if you let me just say something in the background kind of funny we could maybe Absolutely. we can we can just call it a day we can call it a transaction that's right. <laughs> i just know that that's going to get some pushback but i i for sure am on the, the, the thing about music is it's tough well, how come sean paul age. how come hey, sean paul gets to say it well sean paul i is he on other people's music like, does he make the beats for everyone? Is he the guy See, that produces? I think Sean Paul just says his name in songs. <laughs> yeah. I think that he shows up and says it. Like Jason Derulo, I think has just made a career of saying Jason Derulo. And I think, I mean, hey, get the money, mm-hmm. get get all the money you can. Yeah. But and oh, oh my God, and Jason Derulo, I think are the only words that man have ever said. To be honest, <laughs> I don't think I've heard any others. But in any case, the um. We are at about an hour. Oh, that's so. Nice. If you if you want, we can you know go into anything else you wanted to talk about. We have. Uh, I mean, we could talk about music and movies. That's uh, or no, I actually I I always forget I have segments on this show. I okay. forget like I I'm in like the moment and I just like whatever. But okay, so I have two segments. Uh, the first one is called "Cops Are Scary" because I don't think all cops are bad people. But I think just because of what they are and what like the power they have, it's they're just gonna be scary because they could throw you in jail, okay. and it's it's you know, not always fair. So what is uh give me can you give me your craziest cop moment slash if you don't want to do that because there might be children watching you could you could <laughs> give me some, a moment, give, give me a moment like a, this is story time. Story if, time. If you have a crazy cop story. Crazy. Slash, I mean, I mean, you know, you know the life I lead, right? Um, just to get having having a dog, just hanging out at home. Um, but you drive from place to place, and sometimes people get pulled over, and sometimes it's a little bit weird. So go on. Well, I'm just like everyone else, mm-hmm. you know. I um, when you see the flashing reds behind mm-hmm. you, the heart beats a little faster. Absolutely. I'm sure I've run into that situation a few times in my life. Nothing to take from you know, because yeah. some people have like an interesting like. This cop did this, and that was fucking weird, right? But you know, I just, I, I just thought about that as like, cause I, I enjoy, you know, mm-hmm. the, the movies, the movies about crime, the movies about crime, and the police. I uh, happen to be part of that, and then crime people mm-hmm. are part of that. So I'm not incriminating all of my guests, yeah. but I'm just. But it you sounds know, like you're trying to. Just you're, if, you're if trying they to get the rap sheet out if, for the public. If they want to incriminate themselves, that is their fault. I'm just trying to find an interesting moment in time that we could all laugh about. So if you know what I mean, I like think so. I'm not trying to like be. I'm not trying to pry. I'm not. You know, if you don't want to say something, don't say it. But like, I I think at this point we're we're talking too much about it, and people might think we have something to hide. <laughs> so moving on, two other segments. I well, guess. Well, I have one too. Oh, if you okay, go ahead. 
Well, uh, we, do you have a crazy cop story? Are we going to have a crazy cop move, story? Move past? I have nothing to say about the cops. Okay, you're good. Okay. Um, but I do have something to say. I want to list the top five most likely people to lay claim to the title of America's grandpa. Oh, right, right, right. We could, yes, we could definitely get into that. Yeah. So, America's grandpa, like you're talking from a film and TV standpoint, or you're just pop culture and pop as well. culture. Okay. Uh, film and TV would count. Okay. Sure. The first guy popped into my head, uh, Buzz Aldrin. Buzz Aldrin, that, that crazy that grandpa. Weirdo. Yeah. That dude is insane. And uh, I don't know if you've seen First Man, but it did not make him look cool. Uh, he's kind of a dick, but you know. Uh, also, if we're going to go in that lane, Roger Waters, David Crosby, all just old all these British guys, yeah. Old upset dudes, <laughs> just dudes that are just steaming at all times for some reason. Well, I think America sadly have, has recently just lost their grandpa. Oh, right. Who is that? Well, it'd be none other than Regis Philbin. Oh, yeah. Regis Philbin was like, he. I, I honestly would see him more as like a great uncle than like a grandpa. Yeah. Like he's, he's like, you see him at the parties and you're like, oh, Regis, dude, what's up? Yeah, you don't have like, you yeah. know, those heart to heart moments with Regis. Right. You have like a, a crazy story maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, from Regis. But I think um, he would sit down next to you on like a doorstep if you're like feeling down and you were just like by yourself. Be like, hey, Joel, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And that, that's my Regis filming. Yeah. Hey, you, well, you want to be a millionaire? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. You might ruffle your hair. Yeah, he's like, like, come on, maybe, sport. But then a little pat on the cheek. Too, he's like, like you got right, this. Get out of it. Step Dude, out of it. Regis Filmin would for sure say, you got this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. he's he's the most encouraging man ever. So isn't that what we're just all looking for? Yeah. I mean, he's definitely a better support system than Roger Waters and or yeah. David Crosby. Mm-hmm. I don't think... I mean, the thing with David Crosby for me is with the whole Phoebe Bridgers thing. I don't know if you saw that, where she... I've was, been living under a rock. Uh, right. That's Patrick Starr. That we could get into SpongeBob as well if you want. Um, yes. But Phoebe, real quick, Phoebe Bridgers smashed a guitar on a fake amp that or a fake monitor that they set up like like it was all a perform, performance thing and they like she like smashed her guitar and it was like wow crazy because people are still doing that right and then david crosby on twitter was like wow people smashing their guitars it's like it's all a gimmick it's all blah blah it's stupid when hendrix did it stupid when all these people <laughs> and then she was like okay dude shut are you just go live your life man like it you don't like I it, think whatever. David Crosby's allowed to say what he wants regarding how stupid it is to smash a guitar on I stage. Think, I think it's fair. And I was going to say, I could get your opinion on this as well. But I just think, in my opinion, I, everyone could say and do whatever they want. But if you're commenting on shit that you don't like literally all day, every day, mm-hmm. maybe change what you focus on. Dave. Like, like That's what, been... Um, do you get what I'm saying? We talked about this before we started. Yeah. yeah. Why... Why hate? Yeah. Why diss? Right. Why not just love? Mm-hmm. Why or not just, just at least, encourage? or at least if you do hate, or if if you do. Uh, but I can. If you have negative feelings about something, mm-hmm. maybe not hate. I think that's that's a different thing. Yeah. If you have if you have negative feelings about something, you should express it, but not necessarily think that everyone's gonna like. Well, we're all the cater to lead you. character of our own life. That's. That's and we're all geniuses, right? And I've never met anyone smarter than myself. And, and I'm also never wrong. Yeah. So, so yeah, there's that. That's true. That is a problem that we face. Mm-hmm. But again, America's grandpa. Yes. Regis Filmin, great uncle. Yeah. Okay, that's a good title. I think uh, forever America's great uncle. He's forever. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know who's you know who's the other great uncle that. Is like the other the, side, like mom's side of the yeah, family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like the troublemaker. Okay. Howard Stern. Yeah, he's getting old too. Yeah, yeah he's so the like, man. Yeah, he's that guy that's just like, no, what's I the deal like, with this fucking guy? And he's like, will you just stop talking? You don't want to, like, you know, maybe not great uncle. I'm thinking like, mom's like, edgy, a lot older than her cousin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like so, like, guy, he call him cousin. Yeah, right. Yeah. And he just hey, like cousin comes, Howard. He, he comes to the party to eat yeah. the food and just yeah. talk shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you gotta have that guy. He's he's part of the family. You know what I mean? So it's this is America's family, I'd yeah. say. But we still are we do we, have we settled on a grandpa? Grandpa. Uh, so who it's are we talking be like, about? So what are the qualities we're looking for? I think we should start there. Okay. So well, I think you got to be a little endearing, overweight. A little oh, overweight. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say like like a. I, my 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 brain keeps going to like Ed Asner, from. Uh, what is he in the Santa Claus and other? Okay, yeah, things? like he played Santa. Yeah, like a Santa, like a Santa was, guy. He might have been Santa in Elf. 
Yeah, yes, okay. that's what it was. Yeah. But now now that he's he might be gone. I think he did pass um, away. So now like it's a new group of old guys. Right, right. Like we're getting older and they're just getting older and dying too. Who else? Then? Yeah, I mean, so, I, what other old people are there in Hollywood? So, I, I mean, like remember the show Ian Modern McKellen, Family? But he's British. Modern Family. So like who's oh, yeah. that guy? Uh, I don't think he's America's grandpa. No, you know who was, but he also just passed away? Jerry Stiller. The guy. Oh, that, yeah. That, dude, that guy, yeah. he's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, grandpa, that's grandpa vibes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, like he's the complaining grandpa mm-hmm. that's like, why is nothing ever work for me? Yeah. And then you're like, yeah. I don't know, man. Costanza. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got it. So are we at the point where we're able to call Larry David? Okay. He'd probably be pretty insulted no, by that. I, dude, I wish I wish Larry David it was like more more I wish my grandpa was more like Larry David just so I could relate to him more because mm-hmm. I think Larry David is a bit too like I mean he's not like plugged in but he has like this connection with his audience that is like so unique and like he's like such a smart Larry person. Larry has carte blanche. What you know, does that mean? Larry that's when someone has carte blanche you have the free pass to say whatever you need to say. Yeah. He, it's understood who he is. Right. Um, whether it's... Um, like a grandpa, something. though. Yeah. That's very Does grandpa. Grandpa, ha- grandpa has to have carte blanche. Yeah, absolutely. My my aunt has this neighbor, uh, Jack. Jack has carte blanche. Okay, right. Don't know if I'd want Jack to be my grandpa, but on a local scale, yeah, Jack's America's grandpa. Right. Okay. I see that. I not not knowing this man, mm-hmm. that sounds about right. Yeah, but other than that, Pulp Fiction. Have you seen that movie? Yeah, yeah I've seen it twice. So, so the the I like to go over everyone's first time seeing that movie because yeah. that is a very like divisive movie. That like if you're not super into movies, you may have seen that, and that may have been like, all right, don't need to see that anymore. But like that's my shit. I think I was so. right at the um, precipice of fallen either way and i think thankfully i fell towards the okay i can dig this mm-hmm. i get the artistic statements being made yeah i'll never forget that um the one scene yeah. in the basement absolutely what's that guy's name Vern ving rames ving rames yeah oh geez yeah it's not not a great scene to be known for but also he was the coolest motherfucker yeah. in that entire movie and then he has his comeback in chuck and larry mm-hmm. oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely the spiritual success for to I Pulp have, Fiction. Um, I have. Here, here's a theory, <laughs> and you're into films, obviously. I am. Yeah, several. Something I've had a qualm with with Hollywood I like recently. The, I like the vocabulary we've used in this podcast. Oh, I know you listen, you're an English teacher. Yes, but I'm just. I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> but go ahead. I'm sorry. No, please, please watch with closed captions. By yeah, the way. Right. Um, <laughs> please watch with a dictionary yeah. beside you. A thesaurus. A th- yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Might so, be quicker. My problem Mm -hmm. with, my conundrum with Hollywood today, Mm -hmm. the climax of the movie, you know, the bad guy's going up against the good guy. The bad guy always gets just too many punches in that, like, you as the audience, you're not satisfied. Yeah. Why isn't the good guy just taking this guy to town? Can I, if I remember correctly, the scene where Bruce Willis saves Ving Rhames, I don't think that applies Right, right. The, I agree. the bad guys don't get any shots in. No, so the bad guys they got all their shots in on Ving. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. They they brought out the gimp, mm-hmm. and then from that, you know. So hilarity th- comments, ensues. thoughts on my. <laughs> I like that. I think it's very like. Why are they doing that? I think it's a uh, a trope that I think Hollywood itself I think is afraid of the future, and they're afraid of taking any chance. That will not give them the return that they're looking for. Because okay. if you think about it like a business, if you're setting up a restaurant, why would you try... Like any, Jose Rose's Cafe and Cantina? Like that, yeah. Shout out. Shouts out. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> if, to something that totally doesn't exist. <laughs> shouts out to the fictional idea of a, of a restaurant. <laughs> My sandwich shop, grilled pizzas and <laughs> gourmet salads. Yeah. <laughs> salads on the pizza? No, on the side. Okay. But that could be an option. That could, But that's... Okay, salads on the pizza. That's an innovative idea. Hollywood's afraid of. Hollywood's afraid of salad on the pizza because it may not sell very well. Mm -hmm. But someone somewhere is going to put salad on pizza the right way. And then 
that shit's gonna blow up. Yeah, but up. how come the guy in the Revenant just had to, you know, almost beat okay, Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio to death before he got he, pushed in the river? Okay, watching the Revenant, I think I don't know if I can believe that a human being can withstand that much. Yeah, like they they put it they they put the 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 terror meter too high mm-hmm. and i was like all right bullshit like I mean, you, you hit a threshold at some point yeah. so so like you you got raped by a bear yeah also then, i like, like how you say that then but you don't with the pulp fiction <laughs> <laughs> and um but at the end of the day you're almost getting taken to task by a guy your size yeah. you can take down a grizzly bear but you're yeah. gonna let this guy yeah right almost kill you but the thing is is he's had uh basically no shelter no food, no water, and he's still able to have an epic duel at the end of this fucking movie. Yeah. And spoiler alert, <laughs> he wins. He wins yeah. because he's the hero, and there's zero other reason other than the will and fight of a man. And then I guess and, I mean... And if your kid dies, you feel like you have to kill the guy that did that. <laughs> Spoilers and, again. There's, you watch the movie. So another place where this trope is too... Yeah. You know, it's the superhero films. Yeah. How come the superhero I'm can't just... Of. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I never was a fan to begin with. Well, they got to be like as they are in the comics. Because as I was talking to my brother, the comics are fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. Like people... Like New York in Infinity War or Civil War, I heard in like the first couple of pages, like New York was just nuked. Like they just blew it up. And then that's how you start the book. Yeah. That is not ever going to happen in a Disney movie ever in mm-hmm. your life. And that's the problem with Marvel being owned by Disney mm-hmm. is they will not take those like Deadpool-esque chances that end up doing really well, by the way. Uh, I'm, sure they're, I'm sure they're listening. Logan? Everyone? Logan? That movie is not – it's about superheroes, but it's not a superhero movie because it talks shit. I love it. Mm-hmm. But movies are good. I enjoy movies. They are good. Have you been to a theater – Recently? I was gonna say we could talk about the film cast. We had that experience at the the last one of the last days of the uh, what was it called? The Four Seasons. Four Seasons. Oh, I love that place. Yeah, dude, I am so upset that I learned that you had connects there mm-hmm. as it was closing because I would have taken all of the advantage of that if I knew it. Yeah, the um, we had a touchdown was, pass. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, well, then we then we fell off a little bit. We there, did. Didn't we? Yeah. But then we watched wa- Rocket Man together. We watched Rocket Man together. And Elton John as a child. And we, we tore to shreds. Yeah, we yeah. Elton John as a child really just really got to us. Just the the, yeah, the, the heart of that, you know, it was, yeah. it was a tough pill to swallow. Yeah. Just uh, you know. But if I I wouldn't have done it any other way. No, you know? I the thing is when you when especially when things are going well or like you're like progressing in things, mm-hmm. when you look back on everything, you're like it had to happen like that. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, we're here now. So, but th- I did uh, I did enjoy that time that, uh, you know, I could go to a theater and watch a movie and I then record to, a podcast. I went to a movie last week. You did? I did. Wait, where was that? I went to the AMC. Okay. Um, what which, was the... Which is the only option. Yeah. And I went to go see um, Judas and the Black Messiah. Oh, yeah. How was that? I heard good things. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a good film. You yeah. know, it's very dramatic. Right. But the one thing I have to say is, that, you know, it features, I think, probably the two best actors out right now. I would say, yeah. I mean, that's they. this is their spiritual successor to get out performance-wise. Yeah. Because so, they yeah. are the two leads. Mm-hmm. Um, so I love Lakeith Stanfield. Yeah, man. He's in... Dude, Sorry to Bother You is like yeah. one of those movies where you're like, crazy. someone produced yeah. this? And they, everyone was like, yep. Yeah, this is... Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, those, like, A24 is really the only company right now. They're cutting edge. The A twenty four and like focus features is sometimes a little bit, but like even them, that's I wouldn't like, even know anything they did though. Exactly, but you know, do you know A twenty four? Yes. Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. like the lighthouse and uncut yeah. gems and you yeah. know, that's all that shit is like. I believe they had a hand with Judas, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure it was something. Yeah. But they're like the hot shit in Hollywood right now. Good. Like Lady Bird, Lady Bird, all that. Yeah. Yeah. Mid '90s was Jonah Hill's first movie. Yes. That, did you I watch that? that? Yeah, I it was to, good. I um, I I made it, it was a, a first. I made movie. it a very big deal that oh, I yeah. had to like um buy it on Amazon, and my mom oh. was like, "Don't waste your money." I'm like, "I'm buying it." Yeah. They're like, "Just rent it." Right. And I was right. like, "I'm buying it." Yeah. You can watch it again. <laughs> and then I haven't. I but just yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing I did watch, I have talked about this on too many podcasts, but I bought going back to how Hollywood was, American Psycho. 
I bought that on Amazon because I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch this more. And then I bought it, and I was like, this is, like, one of the best movies I've ever seen. Uh, hmm. Dude, it's so good. I don't like it. You don't like that movie nah, at all? I don't like it. See, that's the thing of, like, so Pulp Fiction is a good middle ground yeah. of, like, movies that people can actually enjoy and then insanity. Yeah. That movie leans more to insanity. Yeah, it just, it's not. I get it. Yeah. Fully get it. You I can like, like whatever Fiction. you want. Yes. I like Pulp Fiction. Well, uh, so moving on from that, we can do uh, the last uh, segment that I have, okay. which is impressions. Oh. So I give you some impressions to do. <laughs> Me? Whether they're good or not, it oh, does I already not did John. Matter. I did the best John Lennon. You did the best John Lennon. I did a terrible Dave Grohl. You've done serviceable Dave I Grohl. Is it bad of me, given what I do? Yeah. I don't know who he is. I know, I know who he is, but I don't know. Dave Grohl? I know who he is, but what I don't... What are you talking about? I couldn't tell you what he sounds like. The Foo... Uh, I know the Foo Fighters. Yeah. I don't know what he talks like. Uh, Nirvana. The, he was the drummer. Yeah, I know that. But, yeah. like, what is... Can you do a Dave Grohl? <laughs> so, that was close. <laughs> okay, I was close. Yeah. All right. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. See, I've done this for about uh, a lot of weeks. Several weeks. I don't know which episode even, this is. I've been doing this for weeks. <laughs> you love to hear someone confidently say that. And you're like, yeah, you're right. You know, at least, go ahead. At least two months. Some guy shows up to do the job at your house. Yeah. <laughs> how long you been How long you been uh, installing <laughs> pools? Uh, just weeks. A couple weeks. <laughs> I've been doing this for I'm weeks. I'm getting it man. down. Don't, don't worry. Two, I've been two doing more. this for a few weeks. Two more and I'm good. Yeah. I know exactly what I'm doing. So it'll turn out great. All right. But I mean, if you want to embarrass impressions. me. So, okay. So you got to do... Um, and what if I don't know the person? I want you to. Uh, if you don't know the person, we can we can change it. I but pass. okay, okay, yeah, you could give me a give me a pass. Okay, so you got to do. Um, all right, you got to do uh, Larry the Lobster. <laughs> living, living like Larry. Yeah, <laughs> SpongeBob, SpongeBob. <laughs> yeah, flex my muscles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah say uh, the uh, the. Uh, the free weights are right over there. And you got to like flex. Uh, oh, the free weights are right over there. <laughs> yeah, right. Can, you, it, can it. you do a, a gold team rules? Can Gold team rules. <laughs> Man, that's my childhood. It's I, the shit, dude. Something I want the public to know. Spon- you. That was the first thing you mentioned. Yeah, the first thing. SpongeBob lover number one. We're in an age we where. We didn't even talk about that yeah, at we all. Just, I was ex- I but just go, ahead. go ahead. Um, we're in an age where American high schools. SpongeBob references just fall flat no. and go over the, the kids' heads. They that's don't sad. understand. Yeah, and it's also like you're 23. I so am. That's like you're not even that much further yeah, away like, from. I them. look like, like the weird loser talking about a cartoon. <laughs> yeah, right. But I mean, aren't we all the weird no, losers yeah. talking about the cartoons? See, you got to switch up your references for for younger generations. Maybe like a regular show or like a Adventure Time. You know, they got yeah. Some... So like like Pat, when yeah. I was done watching. Exactly. Cartoons. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what. So I, since I am one year younger than you, I have a bit of. You have that extra year. I, I flirted in, the tank. in that. Yeah. So like while you like I might be one year like Johnny Bravo exactly. older. Right. I've had uh, some the Rocket Cartoon Power Network stuff. Yeah. I love Rocket Power. Dude, Rocket Power is a shit. Ed and Eddie, fantastic. See, I was a Nickelodeon kid. I was not much of a Cartoon Network kid. Well, that's so Cartoon Network had Foster's Home for I Imaginary Friends. That's the one I watched. That's the jam. Yeah. It had Chalk Zone, I no, believe. Or was no. that Nick? That was Nick. Okay, so. Ruby's uh, got the chalk. The chalk, the chalk, the chalk. <laughs> Dude, the chalk. I got the chalk. We got the chalk. Joe's got the chalk. <laughs> yeah, I do got the chalk. We should have drawn yeah. a circle on this. We don't have the magic chalk, though. Ruby's got the chalk, the chalk, the chalk. You got you to gotta do a remix of that. That would be good. Yeah, with, a, with a break beat. With a break beat. It sure is surreal. And then, <laughs> Rudy's got the chalk. Rudy's got the chalk. Sure chalk. <laughs> Yeah, you got it. Yeah, <laughs> goodness so, gracious. Yeah, I was a, I was a Nickelodeon kid. Yeah. So okay, but so SpongeBob. I mean, we can go through we can go through the SpongeBob impressions. I think that that might be a good, you know, they might segment. suck. Yeah. Well, I mean, as we've established, if any of your students are watching this, they will not get the references. So either way, yeah, I don't think you've. I don't know how those. they would find. I don't know how they would know I was ever on a podcast. I don't think uh, I'm gonna change the way your name is spelled. So if they search <laughs> that and it shows up, they'll find. You know. So that's the world we're living in. But folks. that's the thing. So we might have this come out by like, I think it might be somewhere in like. April to May. All right, so we got some time. So it might be like the end of the year. So maybe that'd be bad if they have free time, but, you know. No free time in Rosetti's class. No free time. <laughs> no free time. Straight work. Yeah. But, 
Okay, so we'll we'll go through them. Uh, so Mr. Krabs, give me your Mr. Krabs. Ahoy, SpongeBob! Yeah, hey. yeah. Say he, SpongeBob, me Bob. SpongeBob, me Bob. Yeah, there you go. Okay, good. Uh, me so, money. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was twenty four ninety five. You know when they're breaking everything. That's my dollar, <laughs> Rama. Dollar, Rama. Oh my God. Uh, so okay, Patrick. Uh, SpongeBob. Uh, spo- it's like. It's Patrick overdone. Duh. I mean, even when I see the guy. Say, where's the leak, ma'am? <laughs> where's the leak, ma'am? <laughs> even you got a more base. You got to go deeper. Where, where's the leak, ma'am? That's better. When Finland. I When I see Bill Fagerbake, that's his name, right? <laughs> right? Is that his name? Yeah, the guy who plays him. I've never looked up his name. You ever see him? Like, I know he's baldish. He's baldish. You ever, you ever see How I Met Your Mother? Yeah, he's Marshall's dad. I haven't seen that much of How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> I watch I watch How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, every summer. Really? Yeah, from that's, front to back. That's your office. Yeah, like some people yeah, have the office. Yeah, it's How I Met Your Mother is my preference. Gotcha. Okay, so, so getting back, whatever his name is, when I see him, yeah, speaking in Patrick, mm-hmm. it annoys me. You know, like, I know what you're saying. Like, so I follow like you know some pages. It's like he's doing it up. Like, yeah, like yeah. it's like him doing the Patrick voice. Like, I don't want to even hear the guy who does it, let alone me or someone right. like me do it. Right. Mm-hmm. All right, you're the Flying Dutchman. Oh, what does the Flying Dutchman say? Say, I'm, uh, ah, ooh, <laughs> ah. Okay, so I think I could do something better than that, though. Okay, no, that's the same. It's the same episode, right? Uh, um, yeah. The perfume department. Yep. What yeah, is yeah. He's, he's got a good line. Oh. You know, um, birds are scary, yeah. or whatever. Um, Mold on the ceiling. The, the monkey's fist. <laughs> the monkey. <laughs> the monkey. Also known as the poop loop. <laughs> poop. <laughs> Fantastic. I don't think any show has made poop loop. The poop loop. Yeah, say it. Poop. <laughs> Absolutely love this segment. So we should get into just playing the instruments you have. And then maybe a little tutorial. Yeah, we could we could give us a slide whistle tutorial. So give us what a slide whistle is, how it works, and how to use it. Okay, so this is a slide whistle. You put your mouth on the metal part, and as you blow, or you know, as you blow, you don't suck. Um, you pull the lever cronk. You don't and, suck. Yeah, no. At anything. As you blow, and you pull can the kind lever of, cronk. I don't then, think they'll get that reference yeah. either. <laughs> and then you just you manipulate whatever. Uh, Right, right, right. Oh, so I, can I do a? Can I give you some hi hats and then you go? Like I'll do. I know you have a drum set in front of you, but I'll do mouth hi hats. Okay, so I'm, like, then, I'm gonna do a solo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. That was great. Oh, thank you. Thank you know, you. it's it's all about it's all we're all about the segments here. Yeah, we're all about you know free form, just idea. Do that. All right, that was cool. That was cool. That's a slide whistle. <laughs> slide whistle. So yeah. you have anything else? Well, in arm's reach, right? I have a didgeridoo. Uh, that sounds interesting. Should we, should we pull it out? I think we should. So one second. I will also cut if I need to, but I probably won't. So a didgeridoo is a uh, is an instrument that is primarily bass focused, correct? It is a you you can play two notes on a didgeridoo. Two notes, and they're the same note, different How? octaves. Oh right. <laughs> Okay, so you two gotta, of the same. Yeah, note. Um, and I'm better at the low note. Gotcha. And uh, the brown note. Can you play the brown note? I don't know what that is. It makes people poop. It's <laughs> like a, it's a note that you play, and people will poop their pants. <laughs> Who um, who's famous for that? Uh, I think it's in a movie. The brown note. I've heard that. I right? think yeah. it. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I've heard that. But um, I've never seen it in person. Thankfully. So like, it's not I, heard it. I'm not using this as like an an excuse for a lack of skill on the didgeridoo. Okay. It's, it's, I'm fairly confident you can only play two notes on a didgeridoo. Right, right, right. The same note, just low and high. I mean, there's no, like, holes. Yeah, it's just... It's just the sound. I don't think there's anything you can do. Oh, with, like, your pitch? Yeah. Yeah. So, if I can demonstrate... Sorry if you heard that burp. In the land... You know what that sound? I, I don't know. Was that Lion King? In the sand. Led Zeppelin. Oh. I forgot. 
you know. They have no? a didgeridoo in it? Uh, I mean, it, it's. I think it's a synth, but okay. it's, it sounds like you that. You want to hear the high note? It's not that good. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that one sounds like you're like spitting into something. Yeah, so but. I like the low. Yeah, that's like, mm-hmm. yeah. And then you're like all around a fire. You get one guess. I get one guess? You get one guess. Okay. What, where does the didgeridoo originate? Uh, didgeridoo, the name, the, can I get the... You get one guess. <laughs> that's all you get. I was get. I was going to ask, like, this was a spelling bee. Could I get the country of origin? <laughs> yeah. And then good, that would just good, be the clever. answer. Yeah, <laughs> clever. Uh, didgeridoo. Continent. Didgeridoo. Continent. Yeah, you can give me a continent. No, no, you give me the continent. I'll give you, you the get, continent. You get seven choices. I feel like since you're... <laughs> this is multiple choice. Yeah. This is your teacher just coming coming out to play, mm-hmm. maybe. Um, so I'm going to say... I think you want me to think it's Africa, and that's why you're asking me this question, because I, that would be the, my first guess, but I would say it is Asia. And you're still wrong. Fuck. <laughs> and it's Australia. Really? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Think I, about that. Think I was about thinking like a, I was thinking of um, like a sitar, like would be in the same Middle sort of- Middle Eastern. Yeah. Okay. Somewhere in that, like India. India. Yeah. But- I, that's Asian Indians are Asian. I know, yes, yes, yes. Wild. That's a crazy fact. I learned that in like it's like seventh grade. I've not stopped thinking about it. If they that. weren't Asian, what would they be? Right. That's what I'm saying. They, they like there's well, and that's the thing. I've I've talked about this in previous podcasts, so we're not stepping in unfamiliar territory. But the the thing that like we all are just like Indians, either Native American or from India. Like, that's like a thing that no one wanted to change for a I very teach, long um, time. The kids, yeah, the mythologies, right, right. So I teach them the mythologies, and we spend... do you know the the origins of why they just were it? like because they thought they were in India, right? Is that what is that why okay, they called so them wherever... Indians? You know, that's what I'm saying. Okay, that's what you're talking about, right? And then once the, once everyone learned, like, oh, these aren't people from India, we were still like, yeah, but you're Indians, yeah. And that's super fucked up. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I thought you were I talking that about. Stuff before. I thought what you were talking about was like, we are all Indians. Oh no! Oh, like because the the origin of man yeah, is what you're saying. That's what no. I thought you were saying. No, like like how India. Like if you say India, like these. Yeah, there like are the, Indian I people over there. Yeah, yeah, that's like you have to confirm. It has nothing to do with anyone who's from uh, you know right. this land. Right. There's no yeah, there's reason to, yeah. why anyone would I mean, still I think, refer to I them. I think steps have been taken culturally to undo that. Right. But yeah, that's it's it's just. Like, I figured, you know, talking about it is better than acting like it isn't a thing. Here's the thing. So that I just, when it comes up in my brain, I say it. So I've been, I've been having these thoughts um, as a teacher. This is the canceling part of the book. Okay, so, you know, that's a, it's a relevant part of our life. And this okay. Is, these are yeah. the types of things I try to teach kids. Yeah. Um, the dangers of that, mm-hmm. of cancel culture. Um, and uh, here's was like I was observed for the first time as a high school teacher yesterday by a principal. Yep, I was very nervous. I can imagine. Um, it's like a cop. Yeah. So okay. So maybe I have in a more, way I have more stories like yeah, that right? than yeah. Um, but they aren't just aren't police. It's other people of power. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man, do you ever read Animal Farm? Yeah. I, oh yeah. Obviously. Oh, oh, yeah. 1984. All mm-hmm. the George Orwell. The George Orwell classics. Yeah. You know. So I mean, I I, I build my life. My life's basis. I know the story. Yeah. I won't say I've read okay. it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know you don't read. Yeah, we. that's a thing in this podcast. Um, I guess where I wanted to go with this is I had my big observation lesson. I decided um, I'm teaching Shakespeare. Mm-hmm. You know, Shakespeare. He shakes it up. Um, he does. Actually, he's pretty like, you know, there's it, 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 a through line through all of his stuff. He doesn't really shake it up. Now I that I think about it. that at no? all. No. Well, see, I, I don't know. You need to teach me. Okay, so the thing is, so he <laughs> shakes it up so much. Shakespeare shakes it up so much gotcha. that there are folks, yeah, folks out there. Oh yeah, he was like a cancel guy. They want him canceled, right? Okay. They want to cancel Shakespeare. Yeah, and so that was like my lesson. I was like, we can go back into Act One of Romeo and Juliet, you know, R and J, and can you we, know when can we fourteen find, year olds were getting married? Can, so there are problematic, you know, yeah, there's problematic content, yeah, in the in the play, right. Does canceling it and ignoring the fact that that's how society worked back then benefit us? Does I don't it, think so. Does ignoring the problems of the world and how messy it is help us? Have you... That we're going to books. 
uh, what was that? Fahrenheit 451. Yeah, I never read that one. But this is exactly what we're talking about mm-hmm. because Fahrenheit 451 is all about burning books. And yeah. it's like the the removal of information from the public knowledge that benefits the power structure that is in place. So the the freedom of speech that we do have and the freedom of like well, having a library, yes. like that's cr- insane for like culture and society and everything. But if you shut things out, I don't think I don't I don't like that. It's what? insane. No, it, I just it's like awe inspiring. Maybe is a better okay, word. Okay, that's yeah. That's, okay, that's nice. Yeah, that's a better way to say that. I'm insane. Yeah. I like mind blowing. That's why I would. It shouldn't yeah. even be a question. But yeah. and the fact that it is, that's insane. Right. Yeah. 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 But that's like canceling is like just shutting out that information and not allowing people to learn it. Where it's like you won't learn why it was bad. And you won't learn why it needed to be changed, so you just go probably go back to it anyways. Yeah, the world's a messy place. You can't act like it's not. You can't ignore and yeah. shut out um, to keep yourself safe and warm and dry. Which, going back to uh, Pulp Fiction, uh-huh. is why I like that movie. Because that movie makes me extremely uncomfortable at some times. Yeah. And that's what you need in life. You're not going to... So people that like like feel-good movies, all, all the power to you. Mm-hmm. But... In my movies, I would like to feel as many emotions as I can at, in the span of the time that it's on. So if it could take me from, like, happy to excited to, like, like you know, scared to, like, you just take me on a ride. You know what I mean? Like, and that ride doesn't have to be fun the whole time because looking back on the scary parts, you're like, oh, okay, it wasn't even that bad. So I feel like that's in in the same way with, like, cancel culture. Like, when you look back at, like, it was like Huck Finn, like they, you know, there's a character that will not be named, mm-hmm. but people have a problem with his name. And you know, yeah. I'm sure what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. And that is like, you can't just ignore that that was like what he put down and like did and like just wrote. And that was the time. And it's like taking that too, that doesn't, that distracts from the greater point of the actual story that he wanted to give you like you're just like the same way people panned pulp fiction for being like ah oh, there's a butt sex scene in it mm-hmm. I, it's crazy why would you ever do that in a movie why would you ever do that and then all the other quotes that are in that movie are now nothing because of that part yeah like that's what i'm saying so mm-hmm. i'm gonna stop talking because okay. I've, I've talked a lot no, that's good but you know what i'm saying yeah. like it's like you need there needs to be bad to be good to have good that's like the, the bad has to exist you may not want to focus on it or, like, you know, praise it. And one last thing. But, yeah. There is no war in Bazing Zay. I What is that? I don't know. You just said you wanted to say that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that could, I mean, sample that if you want to use that in his breakbeats. And it sure is surreal. And it sure is surreal. <laughs> but we're at an hour and a half, so let's, we'll, we'll round it out. I feel like we've had a good uh, faux pas. Yeah. Is that the is that a so. word to no, use? I don't think you want to say that. Uh, what does that mean? Um, a faux pas. It's, ooh, it's risque. Oh. Um, we, we had, had a good a rendezvous. Rendezvous. We had a good rendezvous. Yeah. What is, what is a, like, what would you describe as a reservoir dog as an Englishman? Like, I, if someone told you that, like, what would you, like, are these bad guys? Like, like you know what I mean? referred to as a reservoir dog? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Whatever well, you want them to be. Right. 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 They're from the reservoir. You know, the the underbelly. I guess if you context clues. Um, but what do you give, promote your things? This okay. is this is your time. So first and foremost, um, thank you. Yeah. And I promote Connor Minkowitz, uh, Mink Blot Productions, and the Getting Groovy Podcast. Subscribe. So go subscribe to that. Um, and follow me and like the video. My band, the Stalker Boys, has three great albums out there for you sh- to go listen to. And you um, can also watch a live performance of that you on can, my channel. Yeah, you go to the Minkblot channel, go find the live performance. Um, but, yeah, the video is great. Yeah. The video is great. Yeah, thank you. Oh, of course. Yeah. I hoped that things would not break, and mm-hmm. they didn't. They did not. So we're good. Um, my new group, uh, the Half Trays... With a wing to, on the cover. Yeah, that so I know, the half know. trays, uh, double dipping. Double dipping. Uh, go look, listen to the first five songs we dropped, the EP. Spotify, um, Apple Music. Yeah, iTunes, everywhere. Everywhere. Facebook. And, mm-hmm. 
Well, there's a link to other places on Facebook. Yeah, we'll we'll probably make pages soon. Yeah. And the new thing that I'm going to be doing, um, my new musical vehicle is going to be, and it sure is surreal, and I'm recording music currently, writing it, um, collabing with some people, but it's going to be like the Joe Rossetti Jr. show, Mm -hmm. um, and I look forward to sharing my thoughts and ideas with you all shortly. Absolutely. And I would I would love to you know come by again, hang out, do whatever you want to do because you're you're a fun guy and you're Thank you. talented Thank and you, you have uh, value. I mean, every imagine everyone if I has didn't. value. Imagine well, if I didn't have value. You probably wouldn't be able to afford this room yeah. if you didn't have value. But that's that's a different kind of value, mm-hmm. and that's not the one that we're focusing on. We all have value, ladies and gentlemen. Every don't person, let anyone ever tell you otherwise. Yeah, you got to inspire the youth. So I think uh, you have you have a responsibility more so than I do. I just got to sit here and be stupid, mm-hmm. and hopefully someone laughs and likes it, and then Laugh, I get money. Cry, lose you know. thirty pounds. <laughs> If you've lost 30 pounds during this episode, I'm proud of you. Mm-hmm. But unless you didn't want to lose that 30 pounds. Yeah, unless it was like, unless like you lost your leg. Maybe eat some. Yeah. <laughs> like, just eat enough to fulfill your lost leg mm-hmm. and then be your, go back to the same weight. How much do you think the average leg weighs? About that is, 30? That is a good question. I mean, think about it, how much it I don't is. know if we have enough time okay. to answer that. <laughs> well, no, the average leg, uh, I mean, my leg? Yeah. Well, I'm not that much, so I would say... Maybe like thirty-five pounds, forty pounds. There you 30, go. There thirty you pounds. Go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. that's a, that's enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was gonna say you lost that. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, anyways, uh, do you have? Give me link your. What are your socials? Give me your. Uh, where can people find you? Yeah. So I. Um, I was gonna say it's so all those things. But yeah, so like, I'm a guy. So you, you know, know, Joe Rosetti. If you know me, you know me. Right. But the new one I'm gonna try to direct people to is at. Uh, sure is surreal. Gotcha. Maybe we can link that. I was going to say, that should it's be... brand new. I got like 20. That should be 20, popping yeah. at least a little bit more mm-hmm. by the time that this oh, is up. I'd love so. to see that. Hey, I'm, you start putting stuff up, I'll show it to people. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I'm like, I'm waiting. Like, what do I have to show? I mean, the songs are coming. Yeah. I'm doing this thing. Like, I'm going to share the, the well, ominous lyrics, handwritten. If, if you want, I'll come by. Maybe take a couple pictures of you doing yeah. your thing, maybe. I don't know. Should I'm I grow gonna... a beard out? Uh, that's a... I think that's an artist's decision. I don't think you should let other people influence that. Mm-hmm. You got to like look inside your mind and your brain and just be like, is a beard me? It has been. Then there you go. <laughs> I Your profile picture has a beard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'd say as, as cool as you want to make it, yes. But if it gets in the way of, you know, your enjoyment of life, yeah. then cut it. Because that's kind of how I've been. Yeah. So I just... I. This I don't cut this as much as I should, mm-hmm. but whatever. Um, but yeah, that's it. I think that's it. Is there anything else you want to... I, I mean, I can promote... He promoted me already, so I'm not going to promote. I anything. do I do two men's jobs at once. Absolutely. Two man's jobs? Two man's jobs. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, There's an apostrophe in there somewhere. Yeah. It's, it's not where you think. It's in the middle <laughs> somewhere. It's I like a tell, French I word. I can tell you where it really is. <laughs> but that'd be on uh, the next episode. Of Kitten Groovy. Tune in to find out where the apostrophe is. <laughs> you ne- you'll you never guess. Leave in the comments where you think the apostrophe is. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave a few. Yeah. You, ooh. Well, well, we'll get there. We still got a bit till this comes out. I want to start doing these closer to the uh, the time of release just to you know, make news topical. Yeah. But also, it's like, it's about the person. So it's, you're fine. You. But all right. Last thing. I want you to give an inspiring quote that you uh, li- want to live your life by and have other people live by, and then I think you should play us out. I think that would be a, a fair thing to ask for, and then I'll just like fade out as you uh, do do your thing. I'll, okay, so I'll I will we'll, we'll play you out with the the tambourine, and I'll give you a, a count. Okay. After your inspirational quote, I read from the from the book of. Rosetti Jr. Yeah. Simple, short, and sweet. Gotcha. Take this for what you will. Think about our current shared cir- uh, circumstances. Right. If a life begins with a lie, then the truth waits for you at the end of the line. And with that,
Goodbye, everyone. I don't know if I... I might fade that out. Okay. Yeah. If not, see you later. Yeah, fade it out before the, you know... I will, yeah.